by cycloalkanes. In the previous video, we mentioned that by cycloalkanes are simply fused cycloalkanes. And technically speaking, we're going to have two fused rings together. And the characteristic of this type of systems is that we're going to have what we call bridge heads. In particular, we're going to have two of them. And highlighted here in the two bicycloalkanes, you see the bridge heads. Now, technically speaking, what bridge heads represent are the carbon positions where the two rings meet, right? And you can see here very clearly that, yes, the cyclopropane going to the left here meets with the cyclohexane going to the right exactly at those two carbons. And over here, it's a little bit harder to tell, but right at the positions here, the front carbon and the back carbon, this is where the fuse rings meet. In essence, this overall um, almost square bridge is shared by both the left ring and the right ring in this bicycle alkane, but it is via these two carbons in particular that the first uh, fusing occurs. Now, what basically we're going to do is from the point of view of the bridge heads, and this is why it's important to determine where these bridge heads are, we have to determine how many carbons there are per ring to the left, to the right, and potentially to the top of where the bridge heads are without counting the bridge heads within the count. So in these two structures, you can see that you have one carbon to the left. Over here, you have three carbons to the left. And if you look at the right portion, this molecule has one carbon to the right. This one has three carbons to the right. And finally, the more complex, complex structure here on the right side has two additional carbons that connect to the bridge heads. So the way we name these molecules is by using the prefix bicyclo. And then what we do is using brackets we tell how many carbons there are to the left, to the right, and on top of the bridge heads. But the way we do it is by going in decreasing order, in decreasing numerical order. Now, in the case of the molecule here, you have one, mole, one carbon to the left, one carbon to the right, and zero carbons above the bridge heads. So you input the numbers as 1.1.0 within the brackets. Over here, you have three carbons to the left, three carbons to the right, two carbons on top, so you input the numbers as 3.3.2, always in decreasing order. And then what happens is that you simply add up these numbers. So right here you have one plus one, which is two. And since you also have two bridge heads, you simply add two more to whatever the total is. So you have one plus one, which is two, plus two will be four. That tells you that there's a total of four carbons, so this is gonna be a butane structure. Over here, you have 3 plus 3, which is 6, plus another 2, 8. To that 8, you're going to add the two bridge heads, which is 10. So you have 10 carbons in the main molecule. So this is a decane structure. And so the overall name is bicyclo 1.1.0 butane, bicyclo 3.3.2 decane. And don't forget, the numbers have to be inside brackets. All right, so... Let's take a look at a few other examples. And we're going to start with the simpler ones, the ones that don't have additional carbons above the bridge heads. Uh, so we'll look at the next uh, complex molecule in the series. We have a triangular shape to the left, square shape to the right. And the bridge heads, once again, represent, are represented by the carbon here at the bottom and the carbon up here on top. So this is a bicyclo structure. We have one carbon to the left, two carbons to the right, zero above. So this is a 2.1.0 structure. If we add these numbers, two plus one plus zero, that's three. Add two more to that, that's five. This is bicyclopentane. Okay, in a similar fashion, looking at the structure right here, we have two carbons to the left, two carbons to the right, zero carbons on top. So this is a bicyclo 2.2.0. And if you add the numbers, this is four plus another two is six. This is bicyclohexane. All right, continue on that format. Notice that here you have three carbons to the left, two carbons to the right, zero on top. So this is bicyclo 3.2.0. And if you add the numbers, that's five plus two more is seven. This is bicycloheptane. All right, and then one more. Here we have 
three carbons to the left, four carbons to the right, zero above the bridge heads. So this is by cycle of 4.3.0. If you add the numbers, that's seven plus two more is nine. So this is by cycle of no name. All right, now let's uh, get a little bit more complicated. Let's look at the bicyclos where you actually have carbons above the bridge heads. All right, so in this molecule, the bridge head corresponds to the carbon over here on the front and the carbon over there at the back. Notice that to the left, we have one carbon, to the right, we have one carbon, and on top, we have one carbon. So this is bicyclo 1.1.1. Add those numbers together and add a two to it we have a total of five, which means that this is bicyclopentane. All right, over here, same idea. We have two carbons to the left, three carbons to the right, and one carbon on top. So this is bicyclo 3.2.1. Add those numbers together and add two to that. So we have three plus two plus one plus another two. That will be a total of eight, which means that this is bicyclooctane. All right, now uh, for this molecule, we count carbons to the left. We have one, two, and three to the left of the bridge heads. We have one to the right of the bridge heads and one to the top. So this is by cycle 3.1.1. Add those values together, you get five. Add two more to that, you get seven. This is by cycle heptane. Okay. Now for the molecule down here, we have one, two, three, and four carbons to the left we have one two three carbons on top and we have one two three carbons to the right so this is a total of bicyclo 4.3.3 uh, which amounts to 10 since we have to add two more to that we're actually dealing with 12 carbons altogether so this is bicyclo dodecane all right the last uh, example in the series we have three carbons to the left three carbons to the right and one carbon on top. So this is by cycle of 3.3.1. If we add those values together, we get seven, add two more, you get nine. This is by cycle no name. All right, so as you can see, naming the bicycle alkanes is not in and of itself too difficult, but when you start having substituents, you have to start giving numbers. And this is where things can get a little bit complicated, but as long as you follow the following format that I'm about to present to you, you'll find out that this is actually not as complicated as it may seem at first. So let's start with these molecules. We have bicyclo 4.3.0 nonane and bicyclo 3.2.1 octane. What you have to do is you have to start always at the bridgehead. And the bridgehead, one of the bridgeheads is going to be number one. And then what you do is you go in the direction of the ring that has the most carbons. So notice that for the structure here on the left, we have three carbons to the left and you have four carbons to the right. You wanna go in the right direction because that contains the most carbons. And you're gonna, and you're gonna go through that entire ring that is on the right side of the molecule. Over here, you have to look on the left, the right, and the top carbons to see which one has the most carbons. On the left, we have two, on top we have one, on the right we have three. So we're gonna go from carbon one towards the right to cover the um, the, the um, fuse ring that is on the right side until we reach the next bridge head. So notice that here we go from one, two, three, four, five, up until six, because at that point we touch onto the bridge head. We get to the bridge head, the second one. And similarly here, we go from one, two, three, four to five, because at that point we reach the second bridgehead. So then what happens after that is that you're gonna move in the direction of the second biggest ring. In the case of the structure on the left, it's um, a no brainer. You have to continue going to the left. So this will be position seven, that will be position eight, and this will be position nine. Over here, you could go to the left or you could go on top but the structure that contains the most carbons in this particular case is the one going to the left. So you wanna continue going to the left, meaning that you'll end up with position six and seven. And then at that point, if you do have a third position above the bridge heads, then that becomes the place where you start counting again, which means that this position here will be position eight. And this is how you number your bicycloalkanes. All right, so now let's introduce substituents and see how we 
name the whole thing together, including the proper numbering for the bicycloalkane. All right, so at first look, this may look horrendous. This may look like something, you know, out of uh, <laughs> someone's nightmare, maybe Nightmare on Elm Street, you know. Uh, but as you'll find out in a second, it's actually not as bad as it looks, as long as you follow the steps. Now, the first thing to do is to come up with the numbers for the bicyclo. So we know this is a bicyclo because of the fact that we have bridge heads. And you can kind of see the fused rings. And we're basically going to do the same thing we did at the beginning. We're going to count how many carbons we have to the left, to the right, and on top of the bridge head. So to the left, we have one, two, three, and four. To the right, we have one, two, and three. And on top, we have one and two. So this is by cycle 4.3.2. Adding those values together, we get nine. Adding two more to that, we get 11. So this is undecane. By cycle 4.3.2, undecane. All right, so that's just naming the parent molecule. Now we have to go after the substituents. And in order to do that, we have to determine the number on the bicycloalkane. And we're gonna have to basically do this uh, twice because we don't know exactly whether position one is gonna be the bridgehead on the front or if it will be the position on the back. So we're gonna have to look at both and make the judgment call at the end. So. Right now I'm going with the front one to see, you know, just to get the layout. So if this is carbon one, first thing we need to do is move towards the ring that has the most carbons, which is the left positioning on this particular bicycloalkane. So we go from one to two to three to four to five to six. And at that point we reach the second bridge head. Here we want to move now onto the ring that contains the second most carbons, which in this case is three carbons. So the carbons going towards the right side. So then that gives you 7, 8, and 9. And at this point, in the same direction, so this is 9, you're going to jump to 10 in the same. So this is the front port of the molecule. You still want to stick to the front portion of the molecule. So this will be position 10, and that will, right there, will be position 11. This is the numbering for the bicycloalkane if the front carbon is carbon number 1. Now, the substituents, as you can see, you have ethyl down here. You have methyl on the back. You have fluoro on top, and then you have methoxy on this end. And finally, you have your isopropyl, excuse me, your isobutyl chain over on the right side. Now, alphabetically, if you look at the letters, E comes first, followed by F, followed by I, and then between methoxy and methyl, well, Y comes after O, so methoxy comes before methyl. So ethyl is the first one, followed by fluoro, followed by isobutyl, followed by methoxy, and ending with methyl. Now we're going to use the numbers that we have on the scheme to place them exactly where they need to be. So now they're all in alphabetical order. We simply use the numbers that you see them located in as placeholders. All right, so we have the following scheme, 3 ethyl, 7, uh, 10 fluoro, 10 isobutyl, 11 methoxy, 4 methyl. All right, now we have to see what happens if the back carbon is actually carbon 1, you know, the, the other bridge head, in other words. If that's the case, you still have to follow the rules. You have to go in the direction of the chain that has the most carbons. So this will go from 1 to 6. Then you go on the chain that goes on the second set of carbons that are the most carbons. So you go on to the right. And since now carbon 9 is on the back, you've got to make sure that position 10 remains on the back. So notice that now that's going to be position 10 up here on the back. And this will be position 11. So taking that into account and changing the numbers, we're going to find out that ethyl is at position 4, fluoro position 11, isobutyl at position 9, methoxy at position 10, and methyl at position 3. All right, since this is just an alkane, there is no functional group that's going to decide anything here. So it's all up to the substituents. So compare the red series to the blue series. Going from the red series to the blue series, we have 3 to 4, that's bad. 10 to 11, that's good. So, so far, neutral. 7 to 9, that's bad. 11 to 10, that's good. So neutral yet again. And finally, 4 to 3, that's good. So we actually get one good overall out of the blue 
scheme. So that means that the blue, well, the blue actually doesn't end up working because yeah, I forgot we have three bad ones and two <laughs> and two good ones. Overall, this is one bad one. So the red scheme is the one that wins based on the substituents alone. All right, let's do one more example and see how this goes. Substituents, we have fluoro, bromo, and chloro. So bromo goes first, then chloro, then fluoro. This is a bicycloalkane. You have three carbons on the left side, two carbons on top, three carbons on the right side. So this is bicyclo 3.3.2. Add those numbers together, you get eight. Add two more, you get 10. So this is bicyclodecane. And for the numbers, if the front carbon is one, um, now here is in, an interesting scenario because the most carbons is three and you have two options. You could go on the left or you can go on the right. Now what you want to do is go towards the ring that has the first preference. Now bromo of course is on the smaller ring. So it's going to come down to fluoro and chloro and chloro has alphabetical um, priority. So you want to go towards the right side. So that means that you go from one to two to three, four and five. And then you go onto the left ring, which contains the second most carbons. And finally, this is carbon eight. So this one up here will be carbon nine and the back there will be carbon 10. Now in this scheme, you have 10 bromo, three chloro, seven fluoro. If you go with the blue scheme, once again, we wanna go towards the longest chain that contains the alphabetical uh, priority in this case chloro so we go to the right once more up until five when we reach the second bridge head then we move on to the second set of carbons uh, or the second set of rings that contains the most carbons that takes us up to carbon eight uh, since this is on the back carbon nine will also be on the back on the final uh, portion of the bicycloalkane and in this case the numbering is now nine bromo three chloro seven fluoro once again, these are both alkanes, so it's going to come down to the substituents. 7 turning into 9, that's good. 3 into 3 didn't change, and 7 to 7 didn't change. So you have one good one, that means that the blue scheme is actually good, so you stick with the blue scheme for the naming. All right, so that's it for bicycloalkanes. In the next video, we'll talk about spiral compounds.